Spotlight series, and today we are commemorating 35 years of Jubilee. Our first um, episode devoted to Jubilee was last summer on a 117 degree day. Um, but for those of you who made it out, thank you. But that was focused primarily on um, the opening of Jubilee and some of the challenges that it faced, which was the tragic MGM fire. Um, so we are more focused on the opening. Um, today we're focusing on 35 years of Jubilee, so we are looking at Jubilee through the years and the changes that occurred in the show, and we have different generations of performers who are in the show. As I'm sure that we have different generations of performers in the audience, and I hope that you start to put a name tag on out in the lobby that said what years you were in Jubilee. And, and I, can, I can probably do a roll call of, of decades in, in, at the end of the questioning. So we're gonna talk for about an hour or so, then we're gonna let you have questions, but if they go over a little bit of an hour, I hope, hope you understand, because they have lots of great stories to tell. So first up, we are going to have the beautiful, legendary Belinda Smith Schober. Thank you. 
and I didn't quite know what I was going to do. I had graduated early from high school, and I was at Orange Coast College, and one of the stagehands backstage said, I have a brother who's in Las Vegas, and I thought, Vegas, yeah. And he goes, Fresno? <laughs> and I wrote, I wrote him anyway, and God bless Tom Anthony, who was the principal in Hallie of Hollywood. Uh, he wrote me back on my Virginia Notebook of Art. I'll never forget it. It was gold. It was edgy, and it was really nice. And, <laughs> and um, uh, we turned it dusty paradise, right? University of Newark or something. <laughs> and he said, it was fabulous that you're 6'1. My company manager, Fluff, I said, yes, you're right, Becca. Paradise Fluff. He was wild. <laughs> and, uh, would really like to meet you. Can you come for an audition next week? We'll go to auditions. So I came to the audition in my little ballet attire, and that's a big part of my very own thing here. <laughs> and, and I got that. Um, I was chosen to win Hollywood Hollywood. And then I kind of went from there. I became a Trisha's understudy within a couple of months, and also one of Sundays, um, understudy, and then from there I, I went to Paris and went on and on and on. So it was it was the best decision I ever made. It, it's hard to go from ballet to cabaret, but cabaret is the best. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept training all through my career, so I, I learned classical and classical. This is a very famous photo of Belinda in the Samson and Delilah. Well, I came to 
Jubilee, as you say, 1985. But um, I started dancing because I got tired of playing basketball. I was in college and I was playing basketball. And I said, I gotta do something different. This isn't what I really wanna do, but it's paying for me to go to school. So I remember going home and I told my mom, I go, I'm not going back to school. I wanna become a professional dancer. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. 13 of 14 kids. My mother was like, you gotta be out of your mind. You're not gonna be a stripper. <laughs> I go, mom, I'm not, I wanna go like to dance classes and she goes, you're going to school in September. So I had between the summer to September to really try to figure out how I was gonna do it. I figured it out. I scrubbed some windows and swept some floors and was able to go to the Nathorn Musical Theater, which gave me a variety of types of dance. I'm not a ballet dancer by no stretch of the imagination, but I was able to get comfortable in moving. You know, I did martial arts, so moving wasn't, you know, foreign to me, but dance movement was like, it was pretty cool. And I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that there was a lot of women at the dance studio. Like, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> you know? And so I got, a, I got a gig in Mexico for Televisa. And while I was there, I met some people from Las Vegas. And they were like, you should go to Vegas. They're hiring, and they, you'll be great down there. So I was like, all right. And he goes, they're filming Rocky, which I don't know, for Rocky Four. So I'm thinking, oh, I'll come here and audition for Rocky Four. Well, I didn't know they were doing Jubilee, had all the Jubilee cast. So, but they did have an audition. And I auditioned with my then fiance, now next wife, but her name was Bubbles and Dawn, Dawn Brown. And she got hired as a bluebell. And they hired me, they said, but there were no openings in Jubilee. So they sent me to Reno. And they told me as soon as an opening came, I could come back down. And, um, it was pretty quick. Uh, we got married in November. We went on a honeymoon. I got back to Reno on November 20th, and by the 22nd, I think it was, they called me and told me they were like, hey, there's an opening at uh, the Down in Jubilee. I was here for a while. So when you were in Reno, did you actually perform in Hello, Hollywood, Hello? Hello, Hollywood, Hello. Was, I had a good time out there. So just was, very briefly then? Like, yeah, I was, I was there for, for probably four months, if that. And then um, while I was in Jubilee, I realized that my my wife now, you know, then, um, and I were both in the same show. And some people, it works well. <laughs> Not for us. <laughs> Stop laughing, Randy. <laughs> um, so I said I had to do something different. And so I kind of looked at the police department and it was exciting to me. And I said, you know what, I'll go with the Tesco police department. And while I tested for the police department in 87, and I left Jubilee in January of 88 and went to Siegfried Roy, the police department called me in March and said, we're moving your academy date up, you need to come in like two days or three days. So I wound up leaving Siegfried Roy and joined Metro. And I was with Metro from 88 to 92 before I came back into Jubilee. And I was in Jubilee until 2011. Yeah. So essentially, you came to dance very late in your life. You, did, when you said you were interested in, in trying and learning to dance, was that in high school? You know, I did street dance. Mm -hmm. And when I went to the when I, I went to the dance studio, and I could see how good these guys were. I was like, these guys can dance, but and they can jump. I was like, okay, if nothing else is going to help me with basketball. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and no, but it was, it was, it was, it came a little easier for me, I think because of my martial arts training, and because I was committed. The one thing about me, when I decide I want to do something, I just do it. I don't think about, well, you don't have a lot of technique, you don't have this. I don't think about that. I think about, I want to get that, I want to get it done, so I'll just do it. That's just who I am. Well, before we get to Diane, I just want to ask you quickly about working for Metro. How did they deal with your two careers? Did they have any issues? I mean, I don't know how you dealt with it in terms of energy, but. Um, well, first of all, I'm a world champion Muay Thai kickboxer. They had to think for me. No. Uh, you know, it, nobody really bothered me about it. And, and I got to do a lot of, a lot of um, television shows and news, but 
broadcast of entertainment tonight. Yeah, you know, a lot of stuff like that. And I got to do it because, you know, hell is a, a police officer and a dad, a real dancer in a Vegas show, not stripping. <laughs> and um, they thought it was interesting. So they never really bothered me. They didn't bother me about meeting all the young ladies. That was they my bothered question. me constantly. And I told them I would never introduce him because if he goes back, he doesn't matter to me. So, so but that was all they, they ever really said. Was there anything from your career as a police officer that helped you in your dance career or vice versa? You know, every day, Jubilee, when I became a police officer, I realized how lucky I was to have Jubilee. And I say that because there was stuff that would happen as a police officer and it would like tear me apart. And then I'd go to Jubilee and I would be treated just like everybody else. And young ladies would say to me, you know, get out of my dressing room. Well, for say half a year late, <laughs> you know, and, and they just treated me like I was just a normal person. And I, it was easier to cope with some of the stuff that I would see as a police officer when I got to do the work. And I have a funny Anthony story to oh, tell because um, <laughs> when I first arrived in Las Vegas as a librarian by trade, and my first friend that I made, and I know she's in the audience somewhere, it was um, Sarah Jordan, who's now Sarah Orles, and she was a tall, handsome dude. And um, she used to invite me back uh, to sit up in the light booth, and I would get to watch the show, which was so exciting, and I watched it multiple times. And I remember, I think, like one of the very first times that I watched the show from the light booth, I was gonna go to the backstage door and say hello and bring her some flowers. And who is wandering around backstage, nearly naked in a towel, but Anthony, and I always remembered that. And so I think when I emailed you to be on this panel, I said, hi Anthony, you don't know if you remember me, but I'm a friend of Sarah Jordan, and he used to wander backstage. And I listened to the librarian, and there's this, just this moved to Las Vegas like less than a year ago, and there he was wandering around. And so that's one of my earliest memories of only in Las Vegas, or librarians anyway. So. <laughs> Diane had a fabulous career, not even before she got to Jubilee um, as, as a, a, at the Stardust in, in Lolita de Paris. Um, she was a swing in, uh, in the Blue Bell line with Ali Amito. Um, and then she was in Holiday in Hollywood. But I will let her tell some of the rest of the story. But let me get to some of the pictures of, oops. We'll, we'll get back to that picture of you and Drag Anthony. Um, so this is one of my very favorite photos of Diane. This is, I don't know how you got that picture. You gave it to me. So a lot of uh, the folks probably remember Diane being their boss, but before she was anybody's boss, she was um, a dancer herself, and she was um, tell them all about you before I do. So oh, okay, so my parents were from New York City, so they were used to going to the theater. They were very uh, uh, theatrical that way. Um, I actually was born in New York City, and my dad was transferred out. To San Francisco Bay Area uh, to start up with the Silicon Valley. So that's where I don't really remember New York. I was told that I did start taking dance classes when I was three or four, but I think by four or five we moved out to the Bay Area. So um, my parents continued that, and so I pretty much took dance classes uh, the whole time up until I was a teenager. Now, like Anthony, uh, and unlike Belinda and Athena, I wasn't terribly ballet. I really love musical theater. I love the old movies. I love Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers. I love all of that stuff. Gene Kelly. So what I really gra uh, gravitated towards was jazz. Was I, I love tap, I love jazz. And so my style that I uh, trained with was more with Gus Giordano and uh, the Bob Fosse kind of style of dance. And uh, one of my teachers, she actually had worked with Michael Kidd as an assistant in Hollywood before she moved up to the Bay Area and she opened her own dancing school. So she was very much into that uh, style of dancing as well. And it was great, I got to do lots of things. Um, when I was about uh, 15 and a half, I started doing uh, Cinefy Opera and they started doing musicals that had the big stars would come in and they'd be the lead. So you'd have Van Johnson doing uh, Music Man. Uh, I worked with Jane Powell uh, 
Bonnie Toon came in and did the show. So that was great. And uh, it was a great experience because it was a huge stage, just as big as Jubilee. So I was used to being on stage, and it was a 3,000 seat house at the time. So it was a big, big, huge production. And then I uh, started dancing at the theme park when I was about 16 or 17. And it was Broadway style reviews. And uh, we did five shows a day at a parade. And we did that six days a week. So I guess even then I was getting trained for the Vegas schedule because as we all know, the shows ran seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. You had one day off a week. So I started doing that. And then um, there was an audition in Redwood City that I had gone to for the Lido here in Las Vegas. And I never really thought about Vegas because I thought I would go to New York <laughs> because I really, my focus really was on Broadway in New York and Rockettes and the Van Fine. So I went to the audition and uh, the company manager for the Lido was Rocky Galindis and his mother had a dancing school uh, in the Bay Area. So he would go up there and he would look for talent to come in there, which was great. So I was hired along with another girl and came out to, to Vegas and went into Alley Lido as a blue belt. And um, it was interesting because when I was in rehearsals, uh, the girl who was the swing at the time, she said, I don't want to be the swing anymore. She wanted to be, uh, have a regular spot. And what that means is, you know, when you're in a show, you do the same thing night after night after night. You, you dance with the same people, you go to the same spot on stage, you kick the same leg all the time, you do the same numbers. And uh, the swing dancer is the person who has to cover all of those positions when they're off or when they're on vacation. So they said, well, she wants a permanent spot, so we're gonna give her that spot, so we're gonna make you the swing. And I went, oh, okay, well, what does that mean? And they said, well, you get to cover 18 different spots. <laughs> now, I hadn't even been in the show yet, and already I'm the swing. And what I didn't realize at the time there is that you didn't get any extra money for being a swing, <laughs> number one. Number two, you didn't wear, you had your own costumes. So whoever was off, you, I had to go, and you also didn't have a place to sit. You kind of visited, so if the person was off, you would sit in their spot, and you would wear their costumes. And uh, you'd be there, at the time, usually people had scheduled vacations, so you might do them for a week uh, at a time. You wouldn't necessarily do them just for one night, but that did happen. Um, so yeah, so I wore everybody else's costumes. Eventually, I got, I got a pair of shoes, and I got, a, I got a little pastiche, because if someone was a blonde, then I'm not, you know, so I can't wear their hair pieces. It doesn't quite match. So, um, so I did that for about a year, and then I went to Halloween Hollywood, and Flop hired me there. <laughs> oh yeah, that was from Kismet. Um, and I was a blue belt there as well, and that was the first time I met Flop, who was, I was just in awe of. Um, she, she was amazing. Even, you know, we all, we all thought she was amazing, and of course we were all a little bit intimidated by her because she was so elegant, she was so professional, and she just knew everything, and you know, she was, she was the person in charge. So um, I did that, so I closed that show. Uh, I was there the last year. And at that time, they had auditions for Jubilee. <laughs> and uh, so they asked me for a cast. And uh, so we, we lined up, and you know, we were told that we could um, uh, be considered for Jubilee. And at the time, I had um, talked to Fluff about maybe being topless for the show because they had a line of dancing nudes in Hallelujah Hollywood. And normally in the Vegas shows or previously, they just had cover dancers, female dancers, and showgirls. But in Halloween Hollywood, they had a third line, which was the dancing nudes. And it was pretty much the first time in Vegas that I know that they had this line. And it was kind of a combination of the female dancers and the showgirls. So, you had to have lots of training, but you could also work topless or you could work cover, depending upon where they put you. So I thought, oh, that would be great. Well, I knew what they did in Halloween Hollywood, but I didn't know what they did in Jubilee because, of course, the show hadn't started yet. So I lined up with the Bluebells for the lineup, and uh, 
Plus the sale to John, and that was the first time I met John. And of course, we had all heard stories, and the stories we had heard was, whatever you do, don't make me mad. <laughs> um, so, you know, of course, that was the thing. And I was still quite young, and uh, lined up in a line with everybody, and Fluff was reading off her name, so she got to me, and she went, oh, I am. What are you doing there in the blue bell line? I thought you, I thought you were going to be uh, topless. And I said, oh, well, I changed my mind. And she said, oh, okay. And then Donald grabbed the mic and said, why? <laughs> and he kind of had this not very nice look on his face. And I said, well, um, you know, and I started babbling on about, well, you know, I really don't know. I'm really a dancer and I really want to dance. I just don't want to be a showgirl. And, and he had, he was getting, I could tell he was getting really upset. <laughs> and he was getting mad, madder and madder. And I, and I have told this story before, but finally I just said, my mother would kill me. And he laughed and said, oh, okay, just go back in the line. Right, I went back in the line. And I thought that was it. And then that time I got a call from Fluff, and she said, well, Diane, we really want you to be a new. And I went, oh, that's nice, Fluff. I, I, you know, I think I really want to be a bluebell. And she, for Jubilee, and she said, no, we really want you to be a new. And I went, oh, okay, I guess I'm a new. <laughs> because that's what it was back then. So uh, that was before the fire. And then at the time, we were still doing Howie of Hollywood. So we were rehearsing all day. I think we started at what, like 9 in the morning when we got up? It's all a blur. But I think we had to be in a, an hour before to do a warm up. So that would have been 8 o'clock. We rehearsed till 6 p.m. And then we had to get ready to do uh, Howie of Hollywood. We did two shows, three on Saturday. So we kept that up for about a month. We were, we were wiped. We were really exhausted. And then the fire hit. I went to the dunes to Casino Day Parade with about seven or eight other ladies. And then um, I came back, Buff called me to come back, and I came back to do Jubilee, and that's where I've been ever since. So I was there from 1980 until 2016. Wow. <laughs> I asked you a follow-up question about your time at Casino Day Parade. Uh, you were doing uh, Ronnie Lewis choreography. Oh yeah. yeah. So how was that? Because I know some of oh, yeah. you in the audience yeah. may have worked for Ronnie Lewis or know. Oh yeah. Lewis. So so Ronnie Lewis uh, choreography was right up my alley because I was not a ballet dancer. I had ballet. I had some ballet. Uh, one of my uh, teachers was in Martha Graham's company. So you know it was kind of an overall thing. But of course, like I said, my my really thing that I loved was jazz. So Ronnie Lewis's choreography was right up my alley. I loved that doing the choreography in that show.